Hello and uh, welcome back. So here we're just going to finish up uh, part D of this first problem. Uh, at this point we've gone through this data set and identified all of the different components of the, the table, uh, identifying the data set, the elements, and the variables. Uh, part C, we went through uh, the more challenging task of describing the measurement scale and defining what uh, those different measurement scales are. Uh, and having done so, that will actually make Part D a little bit easier to deal with uh, when we consider whether or not variables are quantitative uh, or categorical in nature. So uh, I'm just going to go through a bit of a graphic to help illustrate this, and then we'll come back, and uh, it should be relatively straightforward, uh, I hope. Uh, to identify these particular variables in terms of whether they're quantitative or categorical. So if uh, if we begin with you know the big picture, which uh, starts off with our data set, uh, any variable within that data set uh, is either a categorical variable uh, or it's a quantitative variable. Okay. Uh, a categorical variable, uh, it can be either numerical uh, or it can be non-numerical. Okay, a uh, quantitative variable, on the other hand, uh, can only be numerical. As the name suggests, it's quantitative, it's a quantity, it's measuring uh, something specific, how much uh, or how many uh, of something. So this one has to be, has to be numerical. Uh, if it is a, a categorical, uh, it can go either way. Now having just discussed the uh, measurement scales, well I know, oops, I'm missing an L, I, I know that the only variables that can be non-numerical uh, are either ordinal variables uh, or uh, nominal variables. So an ordinal variable or a nominal, nominal variable, these can be non-numeric uh, and they are all categorical. They allow me to categorize or group different data points together or group different elements together based on these particular categories. This is the same uh, if it's a numeric code that is being used. So again, this is either ordinal uh, or nominal. Okay, so if we've identified a variable as being either ordinal or nominal, then I know it must be categorical. Quantitative variables, well they have to be numeric, they have to be measuring a quantity of something, how much, how many. This is either going to be an interval or a ratio. So if I know that something is ratio data, I know that it must be quantitative. If I know something is nominal, it must be categorical, uh, and so on. So if we come back up to our data point where we've, uh, sorry, our data set, where we've already identified everything uh, based on its measurement scale, well here I have, uh, here's a ratio, this must be quantitative. This ratio is quantitative. All of these ratio variables must be quantitative. And I also know that interval variables are quantitative. So there we've got all of our quantitative variables. And finally, I know that nominal variables and ordinal variables, they must be categorical. OK, so it's relatively straightforward. Uh, once we've identified the measurement scales of each of these, it makes it a little bit easier to classify them as quantitative or uh, categorical. My students always pick out my spelling mistakes for me. You don't have that luxury. Uh, so hopefully I'll spot all of my spelling mistakes as we go. Um, another common name for categorical variable uh, is also something that is qualitative. You'll often see those two words uh, used interchangeably. So uh, hopefully you won't get thrown off uh, when you see qualitative uh, sometimes throughout this course. So that, uh, that completes question 1-1-A of this problem set, which had uh, four parts of its own. So hopefully this helps you better understand uh, different measurement scales and different types of data that we're going to be working with. Uh, and this concludes the set of videos for uh, the first question uh, in this series. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.